I got a little sleepy Kodak here. Yeah, he's had a long day. He's uh, got to chill all day after I walked him. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm covering this one. I might have been done a second time, but I'm blown away. It is 2021. I went early this year. I got a few Arizona beers and Four Peaks just... They are pumping them out. They not only have the Rui, they are actually commercializing and getting them into the stores. Corner stores, QT is one of the ones that are big over there. So anybody passing through, if you see a QT, you can probably find this one. But if you go to Fry's, you can probably, probably find it there. And all the gas stations, pretty much, because Four Peaks is really put, doing their, they're doing their job. Good job, Four Peaks, no matter what. But the point is, Kilt Lifter. It is an amber beer, beautifully made. When I went for the first time, I had a, a, a one in a bottle. It was gorgeous, it was very malty. This changed a little bit, so the main thing with um, bottle beers is after brewing, I realized you have to add additional sugars to keep the yeast alive long enough to create natural gases and you trap it, and then whatever they produce right before they finally calm down, it makes it carbonated. So this one, the main difference is gonna be lighter, um, I don't want to say refreshing, but it's more carbonated, more pronounced, definitely more, a little, little bit more aggressive, but the point is they use a CO2 system, um, kind of like kegging, but instead it pushes the beer through, and as the beer is filling up, that CO2 starts mixing in there, and boom, you got a can. So, when you, that's when you do it that way. You can pour it from a keg, trap whatever gas is in there, and it's okay. It really keeps kind of more of the actual recipe of the beer correct. So... Some people prefer cans. It is the vibrance of flavor. We need to find out what part is it. Is it making the hops more accented? Is it really accentuating the malt? And once you figure that out, it'll guide you through a lot. So for now, I did a bottle, very malty, a little touch of robust, amazing, great. Here's a can, which I know they had to fill it up differently. So it's a different process and I'm gonna compare. So here we go. <clears throat> got my eighth wonder. Here's my eighth wonder. That's for you guys. Uh, solid beer is definitely everyday casual, but they definitely don't clean. Because the top bar is already clean. So they just go, hey, we'll just use what we love. It's just used it. That's cool, but they suck at tap water. Anyways, <laughs> here we go. Kill Lifter, beautiful. Uh, yep, beautiful amber colors. Which can start really delicate, keeping it more of a golden feel, and then they can get really ready and it's a red lagers. It usually has to do with the malt on average, just straight up, but that's still gorgeous. A little lemony from the hops. Slight citrus. Very relaxed. But again, a lot of the malt. The red part of the malt reminds me. No, no, not quite like um, clay. It just has a slight earthiness from it. There's just something extra in there. Usually when pigment's involved, um, especially red, <clears throat> there's more complexity because the grains and all that per process it, and it has that in there. And it really does. It changes uh, not just color, but the flavor. So like red cabbage is definitely different from green cabbage. Um, cab uh, lettuce that has the red on the top, it looks purple, is going to have more flavor than the one that has green. <clears throat> green itself is usually just a very direct distinct bitterness and very two-dimensional and a lot of people don't like it so red can help you benefit you relax you regardless if it's beer or food and adds something that gives it a little extra mm, that's interesting what is that you know good background it's not quite like a plant and that's the thing um, plants green <clears throat> um structure really brings a strong forward uh, flavor and when you add red or purple, because it's a combination, it kind of like mellows out a little bit. And that's like an, an additional dimension that really grabs your attention sometimes. So hopefully it's something for you. Anybody that just likes red ambers, Kilt Lifter. So definitely, it's a little more fruity. A little more pop, a little more fizz, because it's like CO2. It's still malty, but it's not as intense. It comes, it comes off a little more sweet because... Of the process they had to you know inject it co2 then cap it and then lock it in when you do the bottle it's a little more pleasant relaxed still sweet but still more you know undertone not as uh, aggressive so like the best way to describe it without being too rude um, white claw has a very strong fizziness so <clears throat> once you start using co2 the fizziness just elevates because you can just 
put as much pressure as you want, you know? And just boom, you hit it and it has to go down the belt. So they go a little heavy with the CO2. So as it's going down that small gap, it could finally lock the lid on there and then seal it. So if it can be immediately, they can actually put the perfect amount they desire, but that's not how it works. You wanna get a bunch going and they're sitting there going down the conveyor belt. Have you ever seen them? And they have the lid dropped on them, which is still starting to trap it, but it's, since it's not sealed, it's just kind of sitting there and gases are still getting out. So they usually go a little bit higher with the gas, get it in there, the lid sit on it, and finally it seals it off and that's where it traps it at. And it, since it's that one machine making all the beer that it can, it becomes very consistent. Okay, cool, not bad. Not my favorite, that's why I always go with bottled beers. They're just more casual, not as intense. And I enjoy carbonation, just enjoy it more with like water instead of beer, you know? Cause like a lot of people don't like the burping and the fizzy and all that stuff that comes with beer and doing this kind of really elevates it a lot. So to each your own, there you go. Hopefully I described it well enough where you can perceive what you want and you might like this one and not the other one and vice versa, or you might like both. To me, they're both good. It's a beautiful amber. I just know when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, am I feeling like, when I'm feeling that great, having a great day, bottle. So when I am a little under the weather, I go with this, because then once you get a little bit of fizziness, you burp a little bit, yeah, it seems rude and crazy, but once you get your digestion going, it kind of wakes you up. Your body's like, oh, what's going on? Why, why are we burping? What's going on? Why are you getting my attention? And it wakes you up. So that's just my basic perspective. Hopefully it benefits you, understand why. If you don't do beer, hey, I'm sorry, but if you do, kill lifter. One more time, four peaks. Kilt Lifter, Amber, well, Scottish Amber to be more specific, which does remind you a little bit more of like a brown ale because of the maltiness, but it definitely has a beautiful red complexity in it. I am enjoying it. All right, Kodak, sorry, I'm going to wake him up. So I got to go. He needs to sleep. Probably me too. You have a great evening. Take care.